The technology used in Formula One is some of the most advanced on the planet. In a mentally challenging and physically grueling sport, the sophistication of the technology adds a super interesting dimension. And a look at the modern day F1 steering wheel can show the complexities involved in the sport today. In fact, much of the technology in testing for Formula One cars is similar to the tech used in the aerospace industry. As an aerospace engineer myself who's followed F1 for 20 years, it's fascinating to see how the technology in Formula One has developed and the impact this has had on the performance of the cars. And it's the technology that's used in Formula One today that we'll be focusing on to explain the frontiers that F1 is crossing. But I'll also explain how the technology used in Formula One is changing the world. Also, I'll be giving my view on why I believe Formula One races are really one big science experiment, packaged up as entertainment. But first, a bit of background for the uninitiated. Formula One is an international circus of 24 races that occur between March and December each year at some of the most glamorous locations in the world, including at circuits such as Miami, Barcelona, Singapore, Abu Dhabi, and my personal favorite, Monaco. There are 10 teams, each with two drivers, resulting in 20 drivers on the track. And there are two competitions during the season. One is the Constructors Championship, i.e. the team that gets the most points over a season. The other is the Drivers' Championship, which is the individual driver who gets the most points over the season. Drivers have to finish in the top 10 to get points for themselves and for their teams. And drivers need to qualify ahead of the race itself to determine where they start on the track on race day. Also worth noting that there is a budget cap to how much a team can spend on their team in any one year, perhaps to dissuade billionaires from buying the championships. In 2024 and 2025, this budget cap is $135 million. But at the end of the day, it's the team that makes the best use of this budget, who's got the best driver, the best strategy on the day, and ultimately the best technology who stands a chance of winning. So what does the technology in Formula One involve? There are three very basic principles that you need to understand in Formula One. These are being quick in a straight line and around corners, making the most effective use of power in the engine and powertrain, and being able to get the best insights from vast amounts of data, often at real time. Firstly, you need a car that cuts through the air like butter and reduces drag as much as possible. And this is down to how aerodynamic the car is to ensure it travels through the track as efficiently as possible. Aerodynamics, or the study of how objects, in this case the car, moves through the air, is one of the building blocks of modern F1 cars. Teams use wind tunnels to assess how efficiently air flows over, under and around the car, as well as understanding the downforce created by the car, which is essential to making sure the car sticks to the track when it goes around corners at high speed. But Formula One teams take this assessment to the nth degree by using computational fluid dynamics, which uses numerical analysis and data structures to analyze and solve problems that involve fluid flows. Computational fluid dynamics is used to simulate the airflow around the car in order to assess the overall aerodynamic performance of the car. Although being the most efficient with your airflow is one thing, you will still require maximum power from the engine to ensure you have the drive to give you straight line speed against a competitor. Some of the best names in motoring provide engines to the F1 teams on the track. For 2024, this is Ferrari, Mercedes, Renault and Honda who supply the 10 teams. And these companies provide the foundations on which the car is built, namely power and reliability. But you have to put the whole package of the car together, not just the powerful engine. So therefore the hybrid powertrains, which were introduced a number of years ago, are an essential technology component in F1. A hybrid powertrain is when a car uses more than one means of propulsion. So it could be that the car uses a petrol engine as well as an electric motor. In Formula One, this is known as the Kinetic Energy Recovery System, or KERS. KERS captures energy when the car is braking and stores it in a battery for the driver to use later on in the lap. This is not only an efficient power source, but it adds a strategic element to Formula One, especially when coupled with the Drag Reduction System, or DRS, which is when the back wing flips open to increase the car's straight line speed during overtaking. But all these systems in Formula One mean there is a massive amount of data that the Formula One teams have to contend with. And the data battle in F1 has become immense as more and more data is collected before, during and after a race. Being able to get the right insights from that data is essential for F1 teams if they're to make the best use of their budgets and capitalize on details that emerge from that data. 
In F1, this is known as the telemetry data. This data can then be used to monitor a car's performance and identify any potential problems. Formula One cars have 300 sensors that produce 100,000 data points, collecting over 1.5 terabytes of data over the course of a race. This data is analyzed and informs everything from car design to racing strategy. Coupled to this is the fact that AI is already being used in Formula One to help with tasks such as data analysis and strategy development. In the future, AI is likely to play an even greater role in Formula One, helping the teams to design better cars and develop better racing strategies. Now, there are other technologies here that I've not had time to mention. For example, the technology that goes into the simulators that teams and drivers use. Simulators give drivers an opportunity to learn how to drive a circuit and how to learn new circuits that may be introduced during a season. Simulators also allow drivers to discover the racing line on a track and to learn what angle to take on turns, all contributing to giving them the 0.1% edge they need to get pole or to win a race. The simulators are also used for simulating strategy. The computing models used for these strategy simulations include all drivers and teams, but also include assumptions for pit stop scenarios and the variables of any particular circuit, such as pit stop loss, tire degradation, and car competitiveness. The simulator technology is so important in Formula One that current world champion Max Verstappen said of simulators, I told Red Bull advisor Helmut Marko, I want to install a simulator there in my motorhome so I can keep driving at night. It's my hobby and it also keeps me sharp. Material technology has also been a revolution in F1. The use of carbon fiber has helped reduce weight whilst providing the strength needed across the chassis, bodywork and suspension. Clearly on top of all this, you need the right strategy, an aggressive driver who can take advantage of opportunities during the race and reliability in the car to make it all stick. But this gives you an idea of what it takes from a tech perspective to win an F1 race. So how has Formula One changed the world? Well, the concepts and technology used in Formula One have been immersed in our everyday lives, and to some extent, we may not even realize, perhaps also take them for granted. The aerodynamic effects in Formula One have led to advancements in automotive design, resulting in more fuel efficient and environmentally friendly vehicles for everyday use. Active suspension started off in Formula One and is now a part of modern cars. It empowers cars to adapt its chassis level in response to road conditions, resulting in improved traction and cornering capabilities. And we widely see these being used across many cars today. The fact is that Formula One is an expensive sport to run and only the top teams really make money from it, especially given teams invest huge sums to try and win during the season anyway. So you may ask, why do teams participate? Well, the big names in Formula One, like Ferrari, Red Bull, and Mercedes, use F1 as one big marketing tool. They use the innovation and prestige that comes with being involved in F1 and being a championship winning F1 team to promote their brand and their other cars. F1 is then one big hackathon. It's the forum for experimentation and innovation that has led to countless innovations, not only in Formula One, but also in the world more generally. The race season is when teams experiment desperately to outfox their competitors. They use vast amounts of money and some of the brightest engineering minds to find innovative solutions at the pinnacle of motorsport. And this is the real value of Formula One. It pushes motorsport forward. It pushes engineering forward. And it pushes human innovation forward. And that results in a fascinating season in store for all of us. AI is becoming more and more prominent in Formula One. But if you want to see how we can regulate AI so humans retain control, then watch the video on the screen now. Thanks for watching.